If you're still asking whether phone-tablet hybrids, or phablets, deserve to exist, we sympathize. Pockets can only get so big, after all. But in our view, the more important question is, if you're a smartphone manufacturer, can you afford to ignore this category? Well, unless you're Apple, the answer for now is no. And that's why Nokia launched the Lumia 1520 just a few weeks ago. It's prodigious, it's powerful, and it's Windows Phone's only phablet to date. But is it worth buying? Let's see. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is our video review of the Nokia Lumia 1520. If you're familiar with Nokia's design language up till now, the 1520 will come as little surprise in the looks department. It's basically an upscaling of the company's Lumia 925, one of Nokia's best-looking Windows phones to date. Considered alone, the 1520 doesn't particularly stand out at first. There's all the usual hallmarks of excellent but understated Nokia design, from the gently curved Gorilla Glass 2 to the ceramic buttons on our black unit here. It's only when you pick it up and put it alongside more common smartphones that the device's size truly hits you. And in that way, the 1520 is much more like the HTC One Max or Samsung's Galaxy Mega 6.3. Its huge size is a big part of its overall story. But the 1520 outpaces both of those devices on the spec sheet, landing closer to the Sony Xperia Z Ultra in terms of horsepower. A Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 sits at its core, a first for Windows Phone. And it powers another first. The 6-inch IPS display up front boasts 1080p resolution. This processor and display pair isn't insignificant. It's fast becoming the standard on flagship smartphones, and the 1520 is for now the only Windows Phone to live up to that standard. It's also the highest-end Nokia device to include a microSD card slot for storage expansion, a big deal for media hounds. So the 1520 is definitely the phone to get if you want the cutting edge of Microsoft's mobile offerings this holiday season. That cutting edge isn't quite so sharp in terms of software. We talked a bit about why that is in our recent After the Buzz re-review of the Lumia 925, so hop over to that episode after this review for our thoughts on how Windows Phone is aging. But the larger, higher-resolution display allows for the interface to spread out a lot more on the 1520. With a screen like this, Microsoft can finally deliver on the glanceability promise of the modern UI. Instead of scrolling around to find the tile you're looking for, the 1520 has enough room to display everything all at once. It's very convenient to have so much canvas to work with right on the front page. Still, We've dogged other plus-size smartphones for not doing enough to intelligently utilize their large screens, and the 1520 deserves the same rebuke. The start screen is really the only place Windows Phone takes advantage of this phone's hulking dimensions. There's no split-pane simultasking, nor even a windowed multitasking approach to work with more than one app at a time. We're hopeful the forthcoming Threshold update will bring some of this, but that's a ways off. And until then, you're stuck using that huge screen for just one app at a time. Still, big is big, and that added room is very handy for taking advantage of the built-in Microsoft Office suite, and when Skyping, Netflixing, reading, and gaming. A little more on gaming. Though the Windows Store continues to lag behind its competitors in this arena, those games that are here play very well. Low-impact apps like Sparkle 2 and Rise of Glory, as well as high-demand titles like Asphalt 8, play with nary a hiccup on the 1520. The rear-mounted speaker is clear and very loud, and the IPS display does a great job of rendering graphics, the saturation and contrast high enough that we didn't really miss the AMOLED technology from other Lumias. The screen also does justice to the output from the 1520's camera, it's not the 41 megapixel monster from the Lumia 1020, but the 20 megapixel shooter here is still pure view, optically stabilized with a six element Carl Zeiss lens, and the new integrated Nokia camera app with automatic shooting modes alongside professional manual controls. The photos it produces are quite nice outdoors with crisp lines and authentic colors, if sometimes it touch on the oversaturated side, in keeping with Nokia's reputation. Sometimes indoor results are just as good, but other times more noise creeps into the image than we'd like, 
and the automatic white balance isn't always consistent. Thankfully, the 1520 lives up to Nokia's name in low-light photography. The same trends by and large hold true in video output as well. With a lot of fuzz in this challenging lighting situation on an Amtrak train, but beautiful crisp colors and nice sound, even with a face full of sun and wind, in this video shot from a ferry boat. You may have noticed a bit of wiggle in those videos because the 1520 just isn't as comfy to shoot with thanks to its size. That cumbersome nature is also evident when putting the phone up to our ear. The 1520 is just as much a monster up to the head as any other phablet. But fortunately, Nokia's excellent voice quality more than makes up for the awkwardness, in private and in loudspeaker calls. And those calls can go on for quite a while. AT&T's voice network in the greater Boston area is just as reliable as its LTE network is speedy. We had no carrier complaints in the 12 days we carried the device, and the huge 3400 milliamp hour battery means we weren't looking for a power outlet all that often. We'll have more battery life impressions in our written review. At the end of the day, the Lumia 1520 is a monster, but a friendly, lovable one. It doesn't do all it can to leverage its massive screen, and it's bound to be just too big for many people's pockets. But in a world where gargantuan smartphones seem here to stay for the moment, the 1520 gets a lot right. It packs the best specs of any Windows phone to date while keeping compromise to a minimum. So it gets a score in line with its fellow mammoth competitors. We give it an 8.4 out of 10. Folks, we're far from finished with the Lumia 1520. Uh, we have comparisons, features, and a full written review coming soon at Pocket Now. And so you don't miss those, follow us on social media and subscribe here on YouTube. And toss us a like if you did enjoy this video review. Leave a comment down below if you have some feedback. And as always, we thank you very much for watching. We'll see you soon.